Welcome back to the Critical Link Health Project. I am Eric Stratman, your host, but to my left, we have him back, Dr. Stephen Ned, chiropractic physician. And something that we talked about in our last chat was testing, blood test, hair, urine analysis, questionnaires. We didn't really get super deep into that. And I wanted to talk more about how somebody can really find out what's going on, like see what's under that top layer, dig deep. Just as you say, if somebody's inheriting land, you know, you want to make sure you get all the weeds and everything out and see exactly where they're going. How do you guys start that process? All right. So we call this the comprehensive nutritional assessment. And we start off with a whole bunch of questionnaires because that gives us an idea of where this person needs to go as far as, um, you know, is this person really toxic, for example? Okay. And uh, we have a toxicity questionnaire. And if they score high on that, that's the first thing you got to do. Because I was just giving you the analogy. If you just inherit some land, you got a bunch of weeds and garbage there, you're not going to start planting a garden yet. You got to clean it out. Right. Same thing with the human body. If it's full of toxins, your body's in survival mode trying to get these toxins out. So if you, even if you put good nutrition in there, it's probably not going to do you a whole lot of good. Okay. So you're in survival mode. So we got to get them out of that first. And so the questionnaires also guide us as far as we have one that we score and it'll tell us which areas of the body need the most help. Let's say liver or their intestinal tract or their digestion or their hormones. So we score and we take the top three and we focus on those once we've you know, cleaned them out if they need detoxification. Okay. Now you're saying you start at that level. What sort, and you don't have to go through the entire uh, questionnaire, but what are some of the big points that somebody is finding? Is it low energy and fatigue? Is it uh, loss of sleep? Is it, you know, the loss of strength? Where, where is it that you're hitting these points and seeing, okay, hey, this is a, a common factor in what those issues are? Great question. Thank you. Um, so there's a lot of different symptoms that actually overlap into different parts of the body. Okay. So fatigue could be thyroid. Uh, fatigue could be cardiovascular. Uh, fatigue could be a, an underlying chronic virus like Epstein-Barr that causes chronic fatigue syndrome. Okay. So we just go through and look and see where all these points are and, and score it and go from there, in addition to doing all the objective tests, which is the first, on the first visit we do a body composition analysis, which not only tells us how much body fat a person has, but it also tells us how much water is in the body and where it's located. And, you know, you need a certain amount of water in your cells and outside your cells. And what we notice is if you have a lot of water outside of your cells, that usually means you're toxic because the solution to pollution is dilution. You never heard that one, have okay. you? <laughs> solution to dilution. Pollution is dilution. All yeah. right, cool. I like that idea. Yeah, we uh, had a chat on that about talking about with mineral deficiency because if you're deficient, right, your cell wall is not able to allow nutrients in or toxins out so it just keeps you more toxic and you just stay as you're talking about extracellular hydrated instead of intracellular hydrated where your body actually needs it what how many cells in the body don't need water um Not i can't think many, of any right? exactly <laughs> so uh, every 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 cell in the body you know we're we're constantly talking about hydration is somebody you know they want to fix everything at once and they're like you know, I drink eight cups of coffee a day and yeah, I might sip one bottle of water all day long. I had two yesterday. That's great. And what, what is your uh, take on that with hydration? Is it like a half an ounce per pound of body weight? That's what we recommend as minimum for people. Or is there something that you guys are recommending different in your That's office? a good general rule. So okay. if you weigh 150 pounds, you drink about 75 ounces of water. Excellent. And every cup of coffee you drink, you drink an extra cup because it's a diuretic. So it's going to pull that cup out of the body. Pull it right out. Give yes. you all that energies, though. Right. A little caffeine stimulus. So going back to the being toxic, we we're talking a little bit about candida overgrowth and yeast. Tell me a little bit more about that because it seems super interesting. It can cause a lot of problems, and most people probably don't even know that they're suffering from it. Yeah, and typically you only think of it happening in a woman like a vaginal yeast infection, but this is an overgrowth throughout the entire body, starting in the intestines. Okay. And as long as you have enough good bacteria in your intestines, um, you're not taking too many antibiotics, which not only kill good bacteria as well as bad bacteria, and other things that can uh, affect that. Um, if you're eating a lot of sweets, too much dairy, then it tends to feed these uh, 
which actually are normal to exist in the intestines. It's just you want to keep them under control. And if they get out of control, that's when it develops into what's called candidiasis or yeast overgrowth. So with that, we have a questionnaire designed specifically for that, as well as a spit test that you do at home. And okay. you just simply take a cup of water and before you go to bed, uh, you put the water on your nightstand when you get up in the morning, you just spit into it one time and observe it every 15 minutes and see what happens. It should stay floating on the top. But if you notice it gets cloudy and these little projections are coming down, you got this big clumpy mess at the bottom that usually indicates that you likely have candida. And so that's first thing in the morning into a clean glass of water. Right. Before you brush your teeth, have anything to drink. Mm -hmm. So you got that dragon breath, you're gonna spit some fire into, the, right. uh, into that cup. <laughs> All right. Now, when they, somebody identifies, okay, I, I have legs on, the, you know, on my spit, I, I feel like I got candida, what, what do I do? Just use that as a monitor because okay. that's not going to be the only test to determine if you actually have it. Okay. The questionnaire uh, is pretty accurate. And then, um, I mean, you can also have a stool test. We call it a poop test. Yeah. You can have that sent out, which can also check for other things like parasites. And that'll detect if, if indeed you have it also. So once we do find that, then we put a p patient on a protocol, specifically diet. Uh, eliminating certain foods and supplements that are extremely effective in addition to just taking probiotics. There's other things that are needed to rid the body of that. Now, what foods are you seeing that are going to, uh, was it what you were mentioning before, like sweets and dairy, or is there something other than, than that that you're suggesting during your protocol? Yeah, those are the big ones. Uh, ice cream, milk, anything with lots of sugar in it. This show's over. No more ice cream. I know. No, it's no fun. <laughs> Sorry to be a party pooper when it it's comes right. to that. No, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay, you don't you don't need too much ice cream. It's uh, it's not one of those things. Now, what else is going deeper into your testing and, and looking at toxicity that your test is looking at? Well, um, in addition to the questionnaires, we have them also do a hair analysis, okay, which is outstanding because it'll check tissue mineral levels which is different from your blood levels. Uh, your blood levels normally stay in a very narrow range and they can be normal at the expense of the body. So for example, somebody can have osteoporosis and have normal calcium blood levels, but their bones are just you know, uh, porous now uh, because they need that calcium in other parts of the body, including the blood. So the hair analysis picks that up, but even more importantly, it picks up heavy metal toxicity in the okay. body. So if you're accumulating, let's say, aluminum uh, in the tissues, that could be very dangerous. It can lead to some uh, neurodegenerative conditions like, for example, Alzheimer's disease. And aluminum, it's easy for the body to accumulate that because there's so many things in the environment that have aluminum, including aluminum cookware, uh, antiperspirants, and many other things. So that gives us a clue uh, as far as you know, mercury, aluminum, lead, and things like that that a, pop, a person can have that can really... Uh, you know, cause damage all over the body. Uh, we also do, you know, your, the standard blood tests and we like to add in a few extras like folic acid and B12 because that's really important to have right. that and especially vitamin D levels. Okay. And I did a whole podcast on vitamin D and vitamin D, uh, even though we live in Florida, uh, many people are still low in vitamin D. Uh, you can get sun, you can get it from the sun, but your body has to convert it to active vitamin D in the body and it requires magnesium, for example, for people to have that occur in the body. Most people are lacking or magnesium. So, um, I mean, we can do a whole episode just on vitamin D because okay. it's the, the ramifications are just endless, especially with cancer. Right. Yeah, and that's something that, so I've also seen with D3 that K2 is always coupled with that in order to allow it to be absorbed properly. Is that your assessment as well? That is true, um, but especially if you're doing high doses of vitamin D because there are studies now showing that if you, you take high doses of vitamin D, you don't balance it with K2, then calcium can build up in your arteries. And so it's also important to take magnesium because magnesium keeps calcium in solution. So it doesn't build up like that. Yeah, we've seen that on our side from the uh, fitness and performance side, seeing that calcium allows the muscle to contract, but magnesium allows it to relax. Everybody wants to have a ton of calcium, but they're magnesium deficient, wondering why 
they're cramped up all the time and they're having these issues with recovery or performance and there you go. So I'm right. glad we're on the same page. So I've been telling people the wrong thing. So excellent. But I really appreciate you coming by. So if you haven't had a chance to check out Ned Chiropractic, if you just Google Ned Chiropractic and Clearwater, you're going to find it. But Ned Cairo, you got the body body chat, is it? Body chat podcast. All right, body chat podcast comes out every Wednesday. So definitely check them out. So for your host, Eric, for the chiropractic physician, Dr. Stephen Ned, it's been awesome. Stay healthy.